Hey guys, and welcome to this week's episode of The Terra Show. Last week we talked all about the HoloLens and how it's going to affect your gaming habits. This week we're going to talk about how Sonic is the downfall of Sega. But first, let's read some comments from the viewers. JackZeg64 pretty much said what was on everyone's minds. Think about one great thing about it, Terra. Virtual porn. Virtual porn. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's going to be the biggest use of this, and I totally agree. Virtual titties right in front of my face, doesn't that sound great? Meanwhile, Miles Bennett Dawson also had something to say that's actually related to gaming. Two words, survival horror. Playing Amnesia or Slender on the Oculus Rift is one thing. Playing through a zombie apocalypse or Slender game in your own neighborhood is completely different. And then he goes on to mention that if you combine the HoloLens with like Google Maps, it could be really cool. And I totally agree, but I don't feel like this is the technology and the advancement that we've had so far. This is kind of just introducing you to holographs, which is not gonna be what you think it's gonna be. You're not gonna be wirelessly running through your neighborhood screaming and killing zombies yet. But when that does happen, as I said, it's kind of like the Laura Croft thing. I'm definitely gonna be down with it. Finally, Jonathan Wood had this to say. It's pretty amazing and honestly, I'm surprised at Microsoft's advancement, but I couldn't see myself playing every game on it. My opinion stays the same with Terra's. It's nifty, but when it comes to most games, I'll take a console any day. I feel like the HoloLens wasn't really targeted at gamers as much as the Oculus Rift and other, you know, VR or holographic things were. I really feel like it's not going to be that great for gamers, it's kind of just going to be a novelty. But maybe in the future things will change. Alright, let's get on to this week's topic. So some sad news has reached us this week, it looks like Sega is going to be cutting a bunch of jobs and focusing more on digital distribution and online PC games rather than console games. Long ago, Sega was a powerful empire that could actually rival Nintendo, and it was Sonic the Hedgehog that really put Sega on the map. Now, a bunch of years later, it's that same blue hedgehog who's going to be the downfall of Sega. Man, when I was younger in the 90s and even the 2000s, and even now for my gaming channel, I've played so much Sonic, from Sonic 1, 2, and 3, to Sonic Pinball, and a bunch of others. I kind of stopped when it came to the 3D games, because 3D wasn't really my thing, and platformer was really where it was at when I was younger. And it's really sad to say that I would much rather play the old platformers now than I would any of the new games. Okay, so that last statement might have been kind of harsh, but even having other development companies looking over the development of Sonic Boom wasn't enough. Sonic games have been mediocre for a long time now. Does anyone actually disagree with me? <laughs> nice smile! The first 360 and PlayStation 3 game of Sonic was Sonic the Hedgehog in 2006. The game was rushed and it had awful camera angles. Then two years later there was Sonic Unleashed, which had Sonic turning into some kind of werewolf. There was also Sonic Colors, which made new collectibles available, and there was Sonic Generations, which combined mechanics from the old game and the new game and put it together. Sonic and the Secret Rings and Sonic and the Black Knight were okay as story games, I guess. Sonic Freeriders and Sonic Lost World were also very mediocre, and then of course we have Sonic Boom, which was a fucking disaster. <laughs> and the best Sonic games in the recent years, sad to say, were games that didn't even have the regular Sonic elements. Like Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games, that was the biggest commercial success in a long time. And then of course there was Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing Transformed, which actually gave a bit of competition to the Mario Kart series. But come on, this isn't the Sonic that made Sega famous, this isn't the one we know and love from our childhoods. And think about it, Nintendo is making so much money just off of remakes of how amazing Mario used to be. Sega just isn't doing that. So, in essence, Sega is cutting jobs again. About 300 people are going to be retiring a little bit early. And it looks like Sega is going to focus on digital distribution and online PC games only. According to MCV Magazine, it looks like Sega is not going to be focusing on console games any longer. Which is sad news because the Alien Isolation game sold a lot of copies. This also means that the possible sequel to Alien Isolation might be in danger. But of course, there might be some exceptions made for really good games like that. Still, it's sad news, right? Let's take a moment to look at all of the franchises that might be in jeopardy if Sega actually stops making any console games. There's Sakura Wars, Super Monkey Ball, 
Valkyrie Chronicles, Yakuza, Shenmue, Crazy Taxi, and of course, Sonic the fucking Hedgehog. But think about it, most of those titles aren't very huge. The saddest ones are like Super Monkey Ball and Sonic. And then again, I'm more missing the golden years of my childhood with Sega than I am anything else. Sega actually trumped Nintendo at a point for me. For instance, I was in love with the Game Gear, which might have been bulky and huge and awful and had no battery life, but it was in color and way better than the Game Boy, in my opinion. And thinking about all of the amazing games that I played on the Sega Genesis, Sega CD, and Sega Saturn, oh my god. There was Knights, there was Rystar, there was Echo. I miss those days so much. And I miss the old Sonics, the platformers. And maybe one or two of the first 3D ones. So, as sad as it is to see a company with that big of a history and that big of an empire crumble, it's never gonna go back to the way I remember it and the way I cared about it. So, I guess we just have to kind of move on, right? Or hope that they make something amazing and have an awesome comeback and start doing the things that we gamers know and love. Again. Hey Sonic! Enjoy your future! It's gonna be great! But the big question for you guys is, do you think Sega is doing the right thing right now? How do you feel about them stepping away from the console scene? And what are your favorite memories, childhood memories of course, of the Sega Genesis and all the other awesome Sega products? Back when they were amazing, right? Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, post your comments, and make sure you check out my channel down in the description. Bye guys, see you next week.